Part 2. Verdant Wind. Verdant Rain Moon. Fodlan's New Dawn. With the destruction of Shambhala, the ambitions of those who slither in the dark are forever shattered. However, Rhea has suffered grievous injuries in the process. Yet, certain mysteries remain unsolved, so Claude and the others approach Rhea, who is now confined to her room due to her wounds. I am happy to see you two. Sorry to interrupt your rest, but there are some things that we absolutely must ask you. It seems I do not have much time left. I do not intend to hide anything any longer. Rhea, I have to ask, you're the Immaculate One, aren't you? If what I'm thinking is correct, that's what the- I am the last child of the Progenitor God. A long time ago, the Progenitor God came from somewhere far away and descended upon this continent. She changed her form to resemble that of a human and gave her own blood to birth her children. The Progenitor God and her children shared knowledge and skills with the people of the land. Together, they built a prosperous civilization. But the humans turned their backs on the teachings of the Progenitor God and engaged in senseless wars. Eventually, people began to think of themselves as gods and challenged the Progenitor God herself to battle. The land was scorched in the war that ensued, and the majority of humans were annihilated. I believe that those who slither in the dark are the descendants of those who retreated beneath the ground during that time. So they've been waiting all that time for their chance at revenge. It took the Progenitor God an astonishing amount of time to revive the ravaged world. But eventually, the continent found peace again, and the Progenitor God, having fulfilled her duty, fell into a long slumber in the Holy Tomb. The children who stayed behind built a settlement in Xanadu to protect the Holy Tomb as they quietly lived out their lives. But then, Nemesis appeared, bringing tragedy along with him. Even now, I cannot forget the sight of that massive canyon painted red with blood. I was never able to forgive those who proudly wielded weapons crafted from the corpses of my brethren. I was the only survivor of Xanadu, and all I could do was wander across Fodlan, clinging to my desperate desire for revenge. I called myself Seros, fostered the founding of the Empire, and prepared to oppose Nemesis and his followers. Unbelievable. I put Xanadu behind me to gather the remaining children who were scattered across Fodlan. Finally, we killed Nemesis on the Teltine Plains, and I took back the Sword of the Creator. Let me get this straight. Saint Seros is you? You're kidding me, right? Professor, Claude, there's something you need to hear right away. If you have something to report, do so at once. As you wish. We're receiving a constant stream of express messengers from cities to the east. They claim that an unidentified military force is attacking, and that there have already been a large number of casualties. What? The reports indicate that the cities and towns along the East Grander Thoroughfare in the old Sum villages were razed completely. Damn it! Did they come from Shambhala? Could it be that there were some remnants of that wicked group hiding there? I have a report. The unidentified military force has crossed the Great Bridge of Murden. Alliance forces met them in battle, but it seems they have already broken through. They've already made it so far. Is Count Gloucester unharmed? The Count is fine, but apparently my brother joined with reinforcements and was gravely injured. Do you mean to tell me they easily got past a general as skilled as Holst? They say the enemy general has a weapon that resembles the Sword of the Creator. Even my brother was powerless to stop him. That's not possible. The enemy forces are flying a banner bearing the Crest of Flames as they continue their march west along the Aramid River. <sighs> We believe they're marching toward Garrett Mach. We are preparing to meet them in battle. A weapon that resembles the Sword of the Creator and Banner 
bearing the crest of flames, there is only one explanation. The one leading the enemy force is Nemesis himself. Nemesis? That Nemesis? Do you really think the ancient king of liberation has been brought back to life? Perhaps the seal was broken when Shambhala fell. An incredible power that we children cannot hope to match dwells within the blood of the progenitor god. Nemesis obtained that blood, so it would not surprise me if that were the case. The blood of the progenitor god. That's right. He did take the remains from the holy tomb, didn't he? From the blood of the progenitor god. So this. He acquired the crest of flames. From her bones and heart, he crafted the sword of the creator. The sword of the creator is made from her bones and heart? The heart of Sothis is the crest stone that was placed in the sword of the creator. The same is true of the crests of the ten elites and the other crest stones. They were born of the blood and hearts of the progenitor god's children. Those who slither in the dark created them, stole them. Sothis never gifted that power to the humans. The crests of the ten elites the crest stones, and the hero's relics. I can't believe those who slither in the dark made them all. And after that, Nemesis used the sword of the creator to massacre all of the progenitor god's children in Xanadu. In other words, the citizens of Xanadu were killed by weapons made from the remains of their brethren. How atrocious. But I don't get it. The sword of the creator that Teach wields doesn't have a crest stone. So how is Teach able to wield its full power? The crest stone of the progenitor god dwells within your professor. <gasps> After I battled with Nemesis as Saint Seraphs, I reclaimed the heart of Sophus. I wanted to use that heart to... to resurrect her. Even though I had to do some... questionable things to achieve that goal, I wished to see Sophus, my mother, once more. Yes, I believed that if I could resurrect my mother, I could regain all that had been lost. So, that's the truth of it. I suspected that your body housed the consciousness of Sothis. Those suspicions were correct. And yet, she merely gave you her power and vanished. My dearest wish did not come true. But you did inherit the power of the progenitor god. Now, you must use that power to defeat Nemesis once and for all. Fodlin's blood-stained history must end. Sorry. It looks like... I'm going to have to leave you now. One day, I hope you'll give this ring to someone you love as well as I love her. A military force bearing the Crest of Flames on its banner marches west to Garigmach from Shambhala attacking nearby cities along the way. Rhea informs the Alliance that the enemy's general is none other than the ancient Fell King Nemesis. And so the Alliance army prepares for their final battle, hoping to put an end to Fodlin's blood-stained history. What's the plan, my friend? I thought you'd say that. And of course, I'll be joining you. What about the rest of you? Our enemy is a monster of legend. As always, there's not a shred of proof that we can win. A foolish inquiry, Claude. I must finish what my father started. Started? Your father ran away before the battle even began. I... well... I'm in. I need to get back at him for... I'm not going to let him get away with it. Wow. Hilda's serious about this. I, too, will fight until the end. I wish to protect Foldland's future. I feel the same as Lysithia. It would hardly be fitting for Captain Gerald's apprentice to bow. I... I will give it my all as well. 
For the professor, for Claude, and for all of you who... I'm into. This truly is the final battle. At this point, you shouldn't have to ask us, Claude. I do know that, Ignatz. But I had to ask, just to make sure. <laughs> Look at how reliable you kids have become. You've trained them well, Professor. This nemesis guy should be arriving soon. Is everyone ready? It's finally time. That's right. I'm confident we have what it takes to win. Let's defeat this dusty old king of liberation and put an end to this history of lies. Once we've done that, there'll be nothing holding us back. A new and brighter age will begin. Let's go, my friend. Fodlin's new dawn awaits. Nemesis is here, and with more soldiers than expected. A swamp, huh? But there's something about it. It looks odd somehow. <coughs> Can't breathe. He should not have done that. Be careful. The water is poisonous to the living. It looks like we better not get near that swamp. Try to avoid it during the fight. What's my strategy? Allow me to demonstrate. All is going to plan. Guide me well. I do this for all of us. Let's make this quick. What's the plan? Shall we? My skills are rising to my status. Huh? I think they've got some sort of magical link with Nemesis. Could the magic be protecting him? Not sure, but we'd better take out his ten commanders before taking him on. My orders? Pure grit! <laughs> All right, who's next? Fine work. More fighting.
Nine more commanders remaining. These can't be the ten elites, can they? Nah, not likely. Seros, I will kill you. Do not get in my way. So that's Nemesis. You're a crusty old bastard, you know that? All those who stand in my way will be destroyed. Close for my liking. No time for mercy.
won't allow it. Haven't withered away just yet. Difference? Amazing. Lament your weakness. future. Impressive. Demonic beast flying in from the south. Someone here must be able to summon them. I sense an unusual presence. Someone may be hiding there. Bye. 
another victim. Exemplar. Our quarrel wasn't personal. Am I getting close? to slack off. We still have a long way... You are in top form. Now we can't call any more demonic beasts. Time to see off his allies. Thank <laughs> you. 
without a curtsy. I'll keep pushing. Too close for my liking. the tides. Sorry, but I must.
Professor, Claude, all the subordinates to Nemesis have been eliminated. It took some doing, but now is our chance to face off against Nemesis. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm hurt, but I'm with you. That one seemed to work. We're almost done. Let's go, my friend. who's lived too long. Allow me to fix that! so we can open our true hearts to one another. That's how we win! Future historians will refer to this day as the new dawn of Fodlan. Of that, I have no doubt. It's up to you now, Teach. As for my path... A rising flame was alight as the flow of time carved a new history for Fodlan. The ambitions of the fell king Nemesis were crushed, averting what could have been the greatest crisis in the history of Fodlan. After five and a half years of war, a new age was set to begin. Country, faith, history, all that had once formed the order of the world was wiped clean. The heroes whose very hand saved Fodlan from a dark fate commenced with the building of a new society. The leaders of this new, unified Fodlan began their walk down a seemingly endless path, one towards a world that would cherish differences in race and belief, one where all life would be valued equally. Those leaders clung to the hope that their path would not end with Fodlan, that it would someday span the seas to Dagda and beyond the throat to Almira. Sorry for calling you out here like this. I wanted to talk, just the two of us. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for all your hard work. It seems like our long struggle may finally be coming to an end. The way forward will certainly be rough. Right now, Fodlan is like a newborn, frail and easily upset. If we don't create a new ruling system soon, 
the Empire and Kingdom will descend into chaos. The coronation ceremony is the first step. Only then will Fodlin truly be a single, united land. I'm sorry that I won't be by your side at such an important event, but I'm certain you'll do great. I must return to my homeland. As for ruling this new, unified land, well, I'll leave that to you. The Fodlin blood that flows in my veins. I've made use of it as best I could. Now I've got to use my other bloodline to change my homeland for the better. I have royal connections there too, insignificant as they may be. It's time for me to struggle all over again and see what good I can do. If I don't change things in both Fodlin and the lands beyond, I'll never set eyes on the kind of world I've dreamed of creating. You're the successor Rhea appointed, aren't you? And now you're also the hero who saved Fodlin. All those weak people who have nothing to cling to but their goddess, they'll rely on you just like they used to rely on Rhea. You'll be a leader all who are struggling to survive in war-torn lands can look up to. And I... I want a ruler who can lay down a new set of values for the people. Values that don't exclude anyone for being different. I know it's a lot to ask, but you're the only one who can do it. I have something else to ask. Please, I hope you'll accept this. When I first saw you wield the sword of the Creator, I wanted to use your power to my advantage. I wanted to use you to make my dream of a new world come true. But before long, I realized what I really wanted was to see that new world with you by my side. I still feel that way, you know? I always will. That's why I have to leave. But nothing will stop me from coming back. There's no way I'm going to let you go. You know that, don't you? Thank you. For everything. I'll be back before you know it. We'll only be apart for a short while. And now, I'm off to cross Fodlin's throat. I love you. With everything I am. And the next time we see each other, it will be at the dawn of a whole new world. A peaceful, happy world. <laughs>